Hello. Hey. Uh, stop. <laughs> I'm Brandon Walker. More Cowbell, the Mississippi State podcast presented by SEC Country. We are live here in the SEC Country studios in beautiful Dunwoody, Georgia. We are in Dunwoody, right? We're not in Sandy Springs, are we? I'm pretty sure we're in Dunwoody. I thought it was Sandy Springs. You think we're in Sandy Springs? Oh, yeah. the address says Dunwoody. Oh. Yeah. So we're in Dunwoody. The SEC Country Studios here in Dunwoody, Georgia, fresh off Mississippi State, debuting in the college football playoff committee's top 25. Then you really need to shorten that so it's easier for me to say because I'm very terrible at saying things. Oh, sorry, I got my volume up. So let's l- welcome everybody in. How many we got? 64 people already. Good, good audience building early. Greenwood, Mississippi is here. Brandon, Mississippi is here. Seymour, Indiana, Gina Stedman Clarity is here. Denver, Colorado, Arkansas, Shreveport. So welcome, everybody. Welcome. We're going to talk about why Mississippi State is in a great position following the release of the College Football Playoff Committee's Top 25 and why College Football Playoff Committee got it right. They actually got it right. The AP poll, the coaches poll, they've dropped the ball recently, but the College Football Playoff Committee did not. They know what they're talking about. And they got it right. Stayed at number 16 in great position to make a big-time bowl this year. In great position to make a New Year's Six Bowl. In better position than LSU, which is where they should be. Because they beat the pants off of LSU. Starkville, Mississippi is here. Little Rock, Arkansas. Working on our tailgating menu. Ready for Saturday. Hail State from Little Rock. I guess it'll be breakfast this week, right? At your tailgate? Be an early game, so I would assume. Do you guys do breakfast at tailgates, or do you do you wait and tailgate after the game? I've always wondered that. I've always wondered that question. Well, what do you do for an eleven o'clock game as far as tailgating goes? Where's Baby Bell? But well, Baby Bell hasn't been out for a while. I, I just these bells totally outclass the other bells, so I just I just like uh, I like these two bells for right now. Sand Hill, Mississippi, is here. 13 or 16? I, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know what you're asking. State was ranked 16, though. Um, that's that's for sure. Biloxi here again. Hello, Biloxi. Hello, Jacktown. Hello, Puckett, Mississippi, but now in Wichita, Kansas. Christy Holmes. Puckett, Mississippi, down there in, I think, Rankin County. I think. I'm not sure. Laurel, Mississippi. Going to tailgate after the game, then drive home. That's what... D. Curtis is going to do. Hail State from St. Mary's, Ohio. We've got a very national audience. We've seen Indiana. We've seen Ohio. We've seen all of these. On the show y'all put, we are number 13. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't know about that. But we're number 16. Walkerville, Miss, no, Lewis. Lewis, Lewis, Lewis. Okay, do you say that Saucier, Mississippi? Is that how you say that? I think this, I think it's on the coast. Saucier, 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 Saucier. I don't know. Biloxi, Mississippi. Do you guys have thirteen on the T's? Yeah, being changed right now. Okay, that's what they're 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 upset about in the chat. Did I put thirteen on my T's? Did I put thirteen, or did you do it? There's a lot of threes apparently. I didn't write. Okay, I, it wasn't me. 16, so, right? 16. Yeah, 16. 16. Dave. Come on, people. Hey, we're all good. 16. Columbus, Mississippi is here. So, Shay. Okay, thank you very much. Amory, Mississippi is here. Hello, Amory. Hello, Meridian. Hello, Coleman, Alabama. Can we beat Alabama? We'll talk about that today, Trey Stringfellow. Can we beat Alabama? Sure. Anybody can beat Alabama. I mean, Alabama can, they could get a flat tire on their bus and not make it. What percent chance do I give Mississippi State to beat Alabama? Not, not very high, but, I mean, there's always a chance. Tyler Sloan says, breakfast, sausage balls, little smokies, eggs, chicken biscuits, and mimosas getting out there at 7 a.m. Steak and hot dogs after the game. I, I am now going to tailgate with Tyler Sloan. That is my life's ambition. I was planning to... My life's ambition was to work in a good job and provide for my family and hopefully build a nice house one day. Instead, I just want to tailgate with Tyler Sloan. That's all I want to do. That's it. If I do that in my life, I will have been a success. 
I sure hope my wife is. Oh, and my wife just joined. Look at that. How about that timing right there? Oh, gosh. Okay. And that's all the time we have for today. No. Um, hello from Huntsville, Alabama. Home of the largest population of state graduates in the country. Is that right? That doesn't seem right. Like, they would have more than Jackson? I know Huntsville's a nice... I love Huntsville. My mother graduated high school in Huntsville, Alabama. Grissom High School. She did. That was before I came around. That was uh, back in 1970-something. Don't forget when Dak Prescott went to Tuscaloosa and put up with a great fight with a less impressive, def less than impressive defense. Well, I don't think... I don't think State's 2014 defense could be called less than impressive. It wasn't as good as this year's defense, but I wouldn't call it less than impressive. I mean, it was, it was okay. It was pretty good. I mean, there was some NFL talent there. Snell, Mississippi. Bama goes 9-3 and three after losses to LSU, Mississippi State, and Auburn State versus Georgia and Atlanta. No, that's, no, that's not going to happen. State and Auburn could, could very well, I mean, could possibly beat Alabama. I don't know. But LSU is not going in Tuscaloosa with Danny Edling and Ed Orgeron and winning that game. Not happening. Not even close to happening. State has a – I don't know what State's percentage chance to beat Alabama is. Maybe it's 10. But State has a much, much b bigger chance to beat Alabama than LSU does. There's a lot going on on your set, Brandon. Is it too much? Is there too much clutter? Is there too much clutter going on here? What's up with that, uh, that cord you got up? What for? Charging your computer? Well, that's my computer charging cord. Not a good look. Is it not? No. It's a cord on the, on the desk. Well, I mean. There you go. Is that better? A lot better. Yeah. Great job. <laughs> Need more cowbell on the set, man. I got more cowbell. I got two cowbells. How many cowbells can I put out here? Uh, you want to send me a cowbell, I'll put it right here beside these. But I, I've got plenty of cowbell. The, the cowbell ratio on the show is fine. Even if that did happen, Auburn would be in the championship. Uh, no, I don't think so. Because that would be a three-way tie between Auburn, Alabama, or Auburn, Mississippi State, and LSU. And then there would be some, some wrangling there. My son graduated from MSU. We made the 11-hour drive many times. He's now a meteorologist. Give his page a follow, meteorologist Jordan Dressman. So, Jordan Dressman, you've just gotten a plug on the best Mississippi State podcast in the entire world. Jordan, I hope that makes you feel good. Jordan Dressman, meteorologist, graduated from Mississippi State. Put Cowbell's video on the screen. I don't know what he means. Do we have a Cowbell video? No. Definitely we, not. No. We have real Cowbells. Do you ever see Dan going to Atlanta before he leaves? Might make the Peach Bowl this year. Very well can make the Peach Bowl this year. I, that's an impossible question to answer. Right now, ESPN has state number 19% uh, against Alabama. John Evans. Same old helmet. Yes, the helmet's old, everybody. We, we're going to have to get over that. we got to get over that, guys. I, 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 I wish I had a helmet that was used in last week's game, but I don't. I wish I had Dak Prescott's helmet, but I don't. I have this helmet. This is our helmet. This is our helmet. Boy, oh boy. None of the publications are Chad Ginn talking to me. And I have just minimized the entire screen. Just blew it. So I read half of Chad Ginn's comment. So Can we finish it? Please, please tell None me. The publications are predicting Citrus Bowl for us. Citrus Bowl would be yeah, Citrus Outback. Uh, New Year's Six Bowl looks very likely right now. Um, C Citrus Bowl, I don't think, is New Year's Six, is it? It's, it's right below it. What are the New Year's Six? You got peach, cotton, sugar, orange, fiesta, and rose. That's the New Year's Six. That's five. That's five. Did I miss one? Peach, sugar, orange, fiesta, rose, and cotton. Is that six? And then Citrus Bowl will be right after that. I think you could, you could, I think State could get the third best bowl in the conference. And if two teams are in the playoff, which is possible. I don't think it's likely, but it's possible. I mean, don't rule out the Sugar Bowl. Don't rule out any of that stuff. Don't rule out any of those New Year's Six Bowls. There is not a terrible path to finishing in the top 12, and if you finish in the top 12, you're going to get a New Year's Six Bowl. State 16 right now. They'll probably move up to about 13 this weekend. If they can just absorb a decent loss to Alabama, maybe 
you know, 24-17, 24-10, and not fall off the map, they're going to be in range of finishing 9-3 and three and in the top 12 in the country. We'll talk about that. What time do you think the play- Alabama game will be? I think it'll be a night game. I think it'll be a 6 o'clock ESPN game. Uh, I think Auburn's going to win this weekend against A&M, and they, uh, CBS will choose Auburn and Georgia, particularly now that Georgia has been chosen number one in the country. So if we beat Bama, it's really bad for us. I don't understand that question at all. I don't understand that question at all. No, I, 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 I generally don't think beating Alabama would be bad for us. I, I think that would be a good thing. The desk needs turtles. True that. Don't don't ever talk Should again. I bring in a turtle tomorrow. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. All right. So on today's podcast, which is what we're all here for, right? On today's podcast, we're going to talk about the college football playoff committee getting it right. They fixed the wrongs of the AP and coaches poll, and they looked at the situation. They ranked Mississippi State 16th. I think that is very favorable, very good, very accurate. And it's ahead of LSU, which is also accurate. We'll talk about Alabama. All eyes on Alabama. The UMass game is not that big of a deal. I mean, it's just not. State will win. State will handle that game. And then you're going to be 7-2 heading into Alabama. And last topic today, just imagine, if you will, calling a players-only meeting to discuss the future of your program and those players choosing to wimp out of a rivalry and making that one of the topics. Would that embarrass you as a state fan? Because that has happened in our state, and we're going to talk about it, and we're going to make fun of it, and we're going to have a good time today. Cowbells on screen, Ray Linnell. We knocked them out of the top four, and they take the Sugar Bowl. I see, Trace. I see. Um, No. I mean, yeah, okay, so you were to knock Alabama out. you got to consider – that whoever gets knocked out of the SEC title game is probably getting the Sugar Bowl, probably. Uh, there's a national movement. I don't think the national media or national people are going to really like Alabama and Georgia both being in the college football playoff. So I think they'll get the Sugar Bowl, the loser of the SEC title game anyway. AP is the worst. Paul Bowles says that. That is correct. Oh, um, I got another answer from a guy. Yesterday on the show, and I'll do this right now. I won't do it on the show. Yesterday on the show. I told you that I, I emailed the six voters in the AP poll who voted Mississippi State unranked and voted LSU uh, in the top 25, and I didn't like it, so I emailed them. I got another answer, and here is the answer. I won't tell you who it is, but I'll just tell you it was one of those six. Honest oversight. I am being honest. Seriously, an oversight. I turned myself in Monday after the vote. I told Ralph Russo of the AP. I've been voting for 10 years, and I've been guilty of this about three times. It's tough, especially in a week like this. I'm not making excuses, but you asked, so I have to be honest. Well, if I'm getting one thing out of that email, it's that he was being honest with me. Uh, I mean, what do you say to that? What do you say? The guy says, oops, my bad. So, you know, half these uh, voters, three of the six that I've talked to just said, I messed up. It's a weird system when so many people can mess up. It's an antiquated dinosaur system. And I don't know why we put so much emphasis on it anymore. All right. Abby Lauren says Dan Mullen needs to openly say he's not going to Florida before the Bama game. No, he doesn't. Dan Mullen doesn't need to say anything. Media and fans just need to accept that when he says he's happy at Mississippi State, he's happy at Mississippi State. Dan Mullen has no obligation to make you or me feel better. Dan Mullen's not going to Florida. I know it. He knows it. You know it. You just have to trust it. He doesn't need to say anything. I think we have a good chance to beat Alabama. That's what Ginger Tuck says. Ginger, you get the last word before we start the podcast. Turf, are you ready? Yep. All right, let's go. The More Cowbell Show. 
brought to you by SEC Country. And now, your host of the More Cowbell Show, Brandon Walker. That's me, Brandon Walker. More Cowbell, the Mississippi State podcast presented by SEC Country. We're coming to you live from the SEC Country studios as we do every single day here on, well, SEC Country on Facebook Live. We come to you on Facebook Live at 11 a.m. every day, 1045 actually. We have 162 people in the audience right now. They're having a good time. We've talked to each other. We've interacted. We've had, uh, we've had fun this morning. Today on the show, though, I'm Brandon Walker. We're going to talk about how the College Football Playoff Committee got it right. How for weeks the AP poll, the coaches poll, relied on lazy, uninformed, forgetful writers to vote. And they forgot Mississippi State killed LSU on the football field. Well, the College Football Playoff Committee is made up of men, women who have been in football and know football, and that's all they do is watch these games, and they got it right, picking Mississippi State number 16, LSU number 19. So we'll talk about that. We'll also say, go ahead and look at all eyes on Alabama. The UMass game this week, let's not pretend, let's not kid ourselves. Mississippi State versus UMass should not be a game that we have to break down the matchups. Should not be a game where we talk about the strategies or who's going to play or what. Mississippi State should win that comfortably. And as we all know, November 11th, next week, my wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary to my wife, in case I forget. November 11th, Alabama comes to Starkville to play Mississippi State. And that's what we'll talk about. We'll talk about, uh, go ahead and set that up. Go ahead and get a jump on that. And lastly today on the show, we're going to talk about, could you ever imagine a scenario where Mississippi State's former players are summoned by the athletic director for a meeting to talk about the future of the Mississippi State football program? And during that meeting, the players speak up and spend a segment of that meeting talking about, hey, here's my idea. Let's wimp out of the Egg Bowl rivalry. Let's take our ball and go home. Let's tuck our tail between our legs and leave the rivalry. If they ever did that, I think you just shut the, shut the program down immediately because that would be embarrassing. But that did happen. It happened in the state of Mississippi, and we're going to talk about it, and we're going to make fun of it. That's my promise to you. So we'll get to all that. My bookie, holiday cash. You need it, and I know where to get it. My bookie is the place to score it. Serious cash on your sports predictions. Believe it or not, the holidays are just around the corner. While that means plenty of parties, gifts, and spending, it also means there's lots of football, basketball, and hockey games you can score big on every day. Hockey? Who wrote this? Man up and play like the pros on game day. You can play the money line, side, or total. My bookie is your hookup for all your betting needs and offers super fast payouts when you win. They have odds on every matchup and a mobile site that makes wagering on the smartphone a breeze. I trust them. You don't have to take my word for it. Join now and my bookie will match your deposit with up to a 50% bonus. Use the promo code COWBELL to activate your offer. That's COWBELL. Visit mybookie.ag today. You play, you win, you get paid. Well, that was fun. That was fun. At my bookie, that's good stuff. I know a guy who, who has gone through it and has, has won a lot of money this year just on their uh, payout just on their cash bonuses. Uh, if I had enough money to bet on football, I'd do it too, but I don't. So, Mississippi State plays, or Mississippi State shows up in the College Football Playoff Committee's top 25 rankings. The initial poll release was last night. We talked about it on the show yesterday. I was not nervous. I was confident. I was confident that after the AP and the coaches poll disrespected Mississippi State for some time, that the college football playoff committee would be able to look at the resumes, they would be able to look at the teams involved, they would be able to look at the on-the-field results, and they wouldn't forget about Mississippi State. They wouldn't have an oversight. They wouldn't say, oops, LSU is better now because they just are. They would actually look at it and determine who's the better team, and they did. LSU number 19 in the country in the poll, Mississippi State number 16, Auburn number 14, Alabama number 2, Georgia number 1. That is the SEC's representation. State right smack dab in the middle there at 16. And I think it's a tremendous spot for Mississippi State. And also, this time of year is just fun because every time they roll out that initial college football playoff ranking, they always get to say, remember who the first number one was in college football ranking history? 
It was Mississippi State in 2014. They can never take that away from us, and every October, November, it's going to come up. That's fun. I enjoy that. I'm a petty, bitter fan, and I enjoy when we force them to talk, talk good about us. So Mississippi State is in a fantastic spot to finish as the third best team in the SEC and get the third best bowl. Auburn is number 14, but Auburn has a much more difficult schedule coming home. Auburn is going to finish 8-4. and four. They're 6-2 and two right now. That's if they beat A&M this weekend, which I think they will on the road. I think they'll lose to Georgia. I think they'll lose to Alabama. They're going to finish 8-4. and four. State has a very clear path to 9-3. and three. LSU has a very clear path to 9-3. and three. The only sure loss left on both schedules is the Alabama game. LSU has to go to Alabama. Alabama comes to Mississippi State. Um, A&M or Texas, uh, excuse me, LSU still has Texas A&M to play. State has Arkansas and Ole Miss. So I think State's going to cruise to 9-3. and three. I think LSU's going to go to 9-3. and three. What this playoff committee has just said is the resume from here that has been put forth so far by these teams. State's is superior, and it is. LSU lost to Troy. LSU lost to Mississippi State by 30. State has three wins over winning teams in the SEC. They got a, you know, they're not ranked, but the win over six and two Kentucky is not bad. It's a thirty-eight point win. The win over five and three or six and three A and M is not bad. Pretty good win on the road. Uh, the win over LSU, number nineteen, is a very good win. LSU has a better win, the win over Auburn, but still, State's resume is easily a top twenty resume in this country, and it took the guys. That no football, it took the playoff committee to rectify that situation. The AP voters got it wrong. The coaches poll voters got it wrong, but they got it right. I'll get back to that in just a second. But let's look at what is ahead. I mean, number 16, you want to be top 12. If you're top 12, you're going to get a New Year's Six Bowl. Now, I don't know if State can finish top 12. It depends on playing Alabama strong. It depends on a couple teams losing. I think after this week, they'll get up to number 14 or something. As long as they don't crater, as long as they don't get blown out by Alabama, I think you stay in the top 15 to 16 to 17. In the last two or three weeks of the season, you make a run at the top 12. A New Year's Six Bowl is very possible for Mississippi State. Even so, if they don't get one, they, you can still, you're still talking about the Outback, the Citrus. This is going to go down as one of the better years in school history. It'll go down as a top 10 year in school history. Nine and three. A nice sunshine, nice warm bowl destination. It's going to go down as a really good year. And it's really enjoyable. It's really enjoyable. I, I just really, I knew the college football playoff committee would get it right. But watching it really pleased me. It really put me in a good spot. Because I know State's better than LSU. You know if you're watching this, State's better than LSU. But nobody with the power to give that kind of publicity has really seemed to recognize it. Nobody has the ability to look past the name on the helmet and say, well, Team A beat Team B 37-7. to So logically, that team is a better football team. Nobody's had to do that. Well, the College Football Playoff Committee did do it, and credit to them. Credit them. It's a good spot for Mississippi State. I'd love to see, and I don't know if anybody else has espoused this idea. I love using the word espoused. I don't know if anybody else has Going with this idea, but I'd love to see the playoff committee just take over the, the poll rankings. Like, get rid of the AP, get rid of the coaches, and just let the college football playoff committee do it. Maybe start the third week of the season, and that be the rankings for college football. I don't see what the bad deal would be to do that. I, I, I don't see the fault or the drawback to that. These guys know what they're talking about. I think if you look at the top 10, don't even look at Mississippi State. I thought they got it right. Georgia probably deserves number one so far. Alabama deserves number two. I think they got it right. Notre Dame may be a little bit too high for my taste. But Oklahoma and Ohio State are in the right spot. They didn't give Wisconsin a lot of credit for not playing anybody. So I thought they did a really good job. But I just think I'd love to see this committee go ahead and expand it to doing, doing it all year so you get rid of these antiquated AP and coaches polls that we lean on so heavily in the first part of the year. The beat writers that are chosen to vote in the AP poll, it's not really their fault that they mess up so much. Beat writers, being a beat writer means covering one team and covering one game each Saturday. And when you're covering that one game, you're not covering it for three hours. You're covering it for about seven or eight hours. So you're not going to watch a lot of games. If you're covering the 2.30 game, that's the CBS game, 
you might, when you get to the stadium, watch a little bit of the first game. But you're not going to see any of the 2.30 block, and you're going to be working right through the 6 o'clock block. So you're not going to see any football games. And now that guy, when he gets through with a 15-hour day of writing, 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 has to vote on the top 25, and he hasn't seen anything. He might miss a loss here or there. And then the rest of the voters who aren't beat writers are like studio guys, TV studio guys, who only have their jobs because they're good on camera. They don't know anything about football. They don't know a fade route from a mail route. And yet they're voting. They're voting on this thing. So I think the AP poll, the college football playoff committee poll is far and away rendering the other ones obsolete. And I'd love to see it just take over. Love where Mississippi State is at, number 16. They've earned it. Three nice wins. The two blowout wins on the road. The committee kind of forgives that uh, because it just is what it is. Uh, But if you look at the resumes, Georgia has the best resume in the SEC. Alabama has the next best. Auburn, by virtue of beating us 49-10, deserves that next spot. State deserves the next spot. And then LSU with a 37-7 loss to State deserves to be after that. I thought they got it dead on, almost perfect. So Alabama is the number two team in the country. I'm wondering if this is going to affect next week's game. With Georgia being number one and Alabama being number two, I'm almost certain that our game against Alabama will now be a night game. They'll take number one Georgia against Auburn in Auburn next week for CBS. I I feel like that is an almost certainty now that Alabama has been ranked number two and Georgia has been ranked number one. So get ready for a night game against Alabama. I'm going to go ahead and give you that spoiler alert. Get ready for that night game. If you're hoping for the 2.30 CBS game, go ahead and get that out of your mind. It's not going to happen. It's just not. They're going to pick number one Georgia on the road against Auburn. Now, the UMass game, obviously not that big of a deal. Oh, it's a big deal. you got to win it, of course. you got to go out and keep everybody healthy. But we're going to assume a win against UMass. We're going to assume State can handle that game. So all eyes naturally go to Alabama. All eyes naturally move forward to the biggest game on the schedule left. There's no secret to this, all right? This is the mountain that Dan Mullen has not been able to climb. This is the big game he has not been able to hunt yet. This is the accomplishment that has eluded him. He's done many, many, many great things at Mississippi State. Finding Dak Prescott, finding Nick Fitzgerald, going to number one, four nine-win seasons, about to be five, the Orange Bowl in his pocket. He has changed the program's eyes, or changed the program in a lot of people's eyes, but he hasn't beaten Alabama yet. That is the one thing missing from Dan Mullen's resume. And it's a, big, it's a big missing piece. I mean, that would be a huge feather in the cap. Now, I don't think it is really something that reflects badly on him. There's a lot of teams that haven't beaten Alabama in the last 10 years. It, there just are. But State playing them every year, playing them in a, in a marquee spot in November, and State putting itself in marquee spots only to lose to Alabama has made it look a little worse than it really is. So this is the missing piece. Is this the year Dan Mullen gets that? Is this the year that he does it? I don't know. You know, Alabama looks unbeatable every year until they get beat. And they look unbeatable to Mississippi State this year, I'll tell you that much. But, again, they look unbeatable every year until somebody beats them. What people will talk about is, I've seen on the message boards, well, our matchup isn't good. Because you need X, Y, and Z to beat Alabama. You need this kind of quarterback to beat Alabama. You need this kind of receivers to beat Alabama. You need this, this, and this. This is what you have to have to beat Alabama. There is no magic recipe. That's all stupid. There's no magic bullet to beating Alabama. If there were a magic recipe that was out there, if there were a blueprint, a lot more teams would beat Alabama. So people say, oh, you need a quarterback who's 67% accurate on throws to his left side. Well, oh, that's great that you think you've made that observation, but Bo Wallace beat Alabama. And Bo Wallace is one of the most inaccurate quarterbacks in the SEC in the last 10 years. There is no formula. There's not. Get that out of your head. Did Clemson follow a formula? No, Clemson had Deshaun Watson. Did Ole Miss follow a formula in 2015? No, they had five turnovers and one by six. There is no formula. It's all circumstances. It's all matchups that night. It's all of that stuff. So I can't go into the game and say, and say uh, because Mississippi State runs the ball this way, because they do this, they have no chance to beat Alabama. We don't know what next Saturday night's going to be like. 
Now, Alabama's going to be a 10-12 to 12 point favorite against Mississippi State. They uh, are probably going to beat Mississippi State, but I'm not going to rule out my eternal optimism. I just know for the first time in a while, I feel like our defense is tough enough to stand toe-to-toe with them. I feel like we have a defense that can go out there toe-to-toe and stand across from Alabama's offense and match up physically. There's a lot of star talent on our defense. There's a lot of overlooked talent on our defense. Montez Sweat, Jeffrey Simmons. You know, Alabama hasn't faced someone as good as Jeffrey Simmons this year. They haven't faced someone as good as Montez Sweat this year. Their schedule really hasn't been any good this year. But for the first time, I feel like our defense can go out there and battle them to a standstill. It's the offense. Can we run the ball against that team? Can we establish the run and have a balanced offense? If we can, we stand a chance. If we average two yards a carry, it's not going to be a fun night. But win or lose, Mississippi State will be in a great spot come at, coming out of Alabama. I'd rather win, but 7-3 and three with a terrible Arkansas team and a pathetic Ole Miss team left would be a good spot. It's a clear spot to nine, it's a clear path to nine and three, and we would just be, you know, I'd love again. I'd love to beat Alabama. We'll talk about it all next week. Uh, I assume the talk will start very quickly on the boards, but uh, win or lose, state's in a very good spot. Just remember that. So you know who's not in a good spot? It would not be a good spot if you were facing. Committee on Infractions punishment in the next couple of weeks because you committed 15 level one violations, 21 violations. Um, you had an interim coach who didn't know what he was doing. You had the worst defensive coordinator hire in the last 30 years in the SEC. You had the worst power five defense I've ever seen against the run. Those would be bad things. Those would generally be bad. But it's nice to know in the midst of a mountain of adversity and bad football, and losses, and embarrassment. A team like Ole Miss still has priorities, and those priorities are to assure everybody that Mississippi State is not a rival. To assure everybody that LSU is our real rival. That is what's important here. Not the violations, not the punishment, not the national embarrassment. Let's make sure everybody knows we're doing everything we can for Mississippi State not to be a rival. That is just precious. That's what that is. So last week, Ole Miss held a, or maybe two weeks ago now, players-only meeting where former players got together with the athletic director of Ole Miss, and they all had a meeting about, hey, here's what we're going to do to fix everything. We're going to fix this, and we're going to fix that. We're going to hire this guy. We're going to, you know, yada, yada, yada. And one of the, I read this story. I forgot who wrote it. I'm not going to quote it uh, verbatim that they, one of the talking points was the former players wanted to focus on LSU as a rival and get away from Mississippi State as a rival. (laughs) That is just, that is precious. That is cute. If, again, I said at the top of the show, if Mississippi State ever has a players-only meeting and those players come to the table and say, yeah, hey, um, Bill Billerson over here, 88, I played in 1990. I'd really like to wimp out of the Mississippi State Ole Miss rivalry. Could we do that? Could we take our ball and go home? Could we acknowledge that Dan Mullen has owned us for nine years? Could we acknowledge that we are the inferior program in the state? I'd love to get out of that rivalry. Could we do that? If that ever happened for Mississippi State players, I would ju- just shut the program down. Just tear the stadium down. That's embarrassing. That is embarrassing. Can you imagine former players and the athletic director having that conversation? I just, I, I can't even, I can't even wrap my mind around it. That when you're going through all of this self-inflicted stuff, that academic fraud and loaner cars and text messages and burner phones got you in, your focus is on, let's make sure everybody knows Mississippi State's not our rival. That's a level of narcissism and delusion that I'm not familiar with as a Mississippi State fan. The rivalry's not going anywhere, Ole Miss fans. And neither is Ole Miss's football team for about the next 10 years. 
thanks to what you did to try to get ahead in what? The rivalry. It was fun when you were beating Dak Prescott, right? It was fun when you were beating Mississippi State in 2014. I'm sure it was. That's football. You won those games. Congratulations. Now it's time to pay the price. And when you pay the price, you're going to be coached by a bad coach for a while. You're going to have bad players for a while. You're not going to be able to recruit for a while. But you can't escape the rivalry. We got you. You're locked in. Sorry. I love the fact that they want to choose LSU as a rival. LSU has no, I mean, they, they have no reservation. LSU doesn't care about Ole Miss. Did you see LSU's players walking off the field with that Magnolia Bowl trophy, that Dollar General trophy they tried to build? They looked embarrassed. They looked like, where's a table I would like to put this down and go take a shower? Speaking of take a shower, I've talked, for Ole Miss for, talked about Ole Miss for six minutes. I need to take a shower. Terp, where are we at on time today? Are we at about 20, 23 minutes? Approximately. You're not looking, are you? You don't have it? No, I don't. That's un- that- it's your professionalism that sets you apart, Terp. Thank you. I mean, you are, you are the man. I'm going to talk about – we don't have a graphic for this, but I want to talk about basketball for just a second. Um, ben Howland had media day yesterday. They're saying all the right things. The players are saying all the right things. It appears Abdul Lado, the four-star – I guess redshirt freshman now will play and is ready to go. We'll play maybe the second or third game, but will not play in the first game. I'm having a hard time mustering up excitement for basketball. I mean, it's just, it's, it's for seven years, it's been a sport that hasn't generated a lot of excitement. So when the team gets to where it needs to get to, the excitement will return. It's just hard to get really excited. Now, women's basketball, I don't think I've ever been as excited about women's basketball as I am right now. These two teams will take the court very, very soon. One, uh, the women's basketball team, I think, picked fourth in the country preseason. Fourth or fifth. I think it was UConn, South Carolina, Baylor, Mississippi State. Yeah, it was fourth. So, State's women picked number four in the country. I, I really hope Mississippi State's men's basketball team turns it around this year. I don't know if I'm looking for that to happen. I just want to see fun basketball. I want to see a team that puts – people in the seats that, that makes the hump what it used to be. I think the hump's one of the best basketball buildings in the entire conference. A lot of people will tell you that when it's rocking, but it hasn't been rocking for men's basketball for a while. So I'm not going to break anything down. I'm not going to say this guy needs to be this, this guy needs to be that. I'm just in a wait and see mode as far as Mississippi state men's basketball goes. We'll talk about that more probably later this week. We'll talk about other things later this week. Uh, maybe we'll reach out and have a guest tomorrow, but on the podcast, I'm going to go ahead and drop you off. Facebook Live, here I come. I'm coming right back to you. We'll have a good time, so get your topics ready. Today, best flavor of ice cream. That's what we're going to talk about on the Facebook Live. You can join me on Facebook Live every morning at 10.45 a.m. Central Time, where we have a um, on SEC Country's Mississippi State Facebook page. You'll see the video link come up, and you can just click on that, and you'll see my beautiful face. I'm very handsome. Very, uh, and I have a very good show. So, thank you for being here on the podcast. My name, Brandon Walker. You've been listening to More Cowbell, the Mississippi State podcast presented by SEC Country. How you How you doing in there, Turp? You good? I'm surviving. Seem like you're dragging today. Uh, yeah. I feel like everybody's dragging. Is it the post Halloween? Yes. Drags. Late night. You had a late night. Yes. You're 23 years old. You went trick-or-treating? No. Is, is, is Halloween like a club night in Atlanta where everybody yeah. goes out and has fun? Yeah, I had fun. Oh, you had fun. You had a good time. Paying the price right now, though. What's your favorite uh, flavor ice cream? Um, uh, Cookies and cream. Cookies and cream. I love cookies and cream ice cream. What about you? Uh, I'd have to go mint chocolate chip. That's, That's good. the only ice cream I eat. That's so. a good one. Ask uh, Landshark. What's Land hers? Shark, what is yours? Chocolate chip cookie dough. Oh, yeah. Blue, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Did you lose weight? Well, thank you, Dickie Delishman. No, I just look terrible today. Sorry. Um, I don't know what that is, Matt, uh, Matt Weisinger. Chocolate almond is the best. Mint chocolate chip is goat. Really miss the Jack Crystal clips. Can you start doing those again? So, Britt Izell. Yeah, I, I miss them too, but we don't. We only have so many clips, so I can't run through them every week. 
my idea was every time we play a team that has some good clips, and Alabama probably will next week, we'll uh, we'll do that next week. So yeah, thank you. We'll bring back Jack next week. Bob Kars Kars Karstaken Karskaden called you a demogorgon on today's B and B show. What's your response to these allegations? What what is demogorgon? What is that? Stranger Things. What is Stranger Things? Oh, uh, that Netflix show. Yeah. I'm okay. Brandon, are you worried about Ole Miss targeting MSU? What's the rule of the last game of the season for, for targeting? No, I'm not worried about Ole Miss. Have you seen their defense? They haven't hit a target all year. Why would they start in the egg bowl? Why? Why? I'd be like, I'd be like uh, it going, uh, going into a field of blind archers and worried about being targeted. Well, yeah, you might get hit, but not because they tried. Muscadine Ripple. Paul Bowles, that's his favorite ice cream. What is that? It's... Uh, Made of muscadines. What is the muscadine? It's a fruit. I've never heard of that in my life. Well, you've never lived in Mississippi. Okay. That's also true. I had to take a call. Did you discuss the School Up North delusion meeting? I did. I did. You can go back. I talked about it for about eight minutes. I certainly did. I bet since the rankings came out, the AP and coaches polls will adjust the votes, the votes entirely or accordingly. I hope so. I hope so, Bill Rowe. Because the college football playoff committee got it right and the AP voters have been getting it wrong. It's amazing that six voters picked Mississippi State unranked. I emailed all six and half of them have emailed back and said, yeah, my bad. Sorry. I just messed up. How do you do that? (laughs) How do you do that? Muscadine is a grape, according to Drew Newell. They would target to hurt Leo and there at Grace Thacker Good says that. Didn't they say that last year? Like, right before the Egg Bowl, one of Ole Miss's media fanboys said, snitches get, you know what snitches get? Or, you know what snitches get? And Leo was the player of the game, defensively in that game. So, go ahead, let him target. Muscadine Ripple is an MSU specialty. Abby Lauren says, I have a degree in kinesiology. Um, I'll take their job. Well, that'd be, that'd be nice. If more cowbell was a movie, Terp would be played by Steve Buscemi. <laughs> That's funny. It is I funny. like that. I do too. I laughed. I hope the drive to start back from Starkville to Seligen after basketball games isn't going to seem longer this year. I hope so too. I hope so too. Eric Edwards says at least we're finally getting some national recognition. It is nice. You know, people say well, rankings don't matter. Polls don't matter. They kind of matter. They do matter. Especially the college football playoff committee ranking. If you're higher than other teams in that ranking, you're going to get a better bowl than they are. If you're in the top 12, you're going to get a New Year's Six Bowl. So, yeah, they matter. They matter a lot. Smooth. Excuse me. <laughs> what else? <laughs> what else would you guys like to talk about? We can talk about basketball, football. We can talk about Alabama. We can talk about uh, rankings matter and recruiting as well, Travis Preston. Yeah, well, not recruiting rankings. You're talking about rankings as far as the polls matter when you go out to recruit. I can buy that. I can buy that. Brandon Halford is glad that they ranked us above LSU. I am too. If we went out and lose to Alabama, where do you think we fall in the rankings? I think we'll be between like 12 and 15, and maybe we get lucky enough and get up to number 12. I think definitely between that 10 and 15 range. Women host or guest host on your show? Um, I mean, I, I'm open to anybody being a guest on the show. I really don't have a, a problem with anybody. I hope your lunch was good. Yeah, now they're asking about my lunch yesterday. Somebody else asked, was the food good yesterday? So it was Moe's. It, I don't know if you – I don't. do we have any Moe's in Mississippi? Moe's Southwest Grill, do we have any? I, I don't know. Um, I know we have them here in Atlanta. I have a bunch of them. So it was Moe's Southwest Grill. So I, I made me two steak tacos and a bunch of nachos. And I got to tell you, Terp, your plate was embarrassing. All right. What was wrong with my plate? Your plate was embarrassing. There were other people that had to eat after us, and you made a nacho plate that was a foot and a half wide. No, I did It was unbelievable. You got so many nachos. There, there's just chips. There's a thousand chips over there. I I, I proportioned so, the chicken and everything else. Apparently there's a Moe's, there's a Moe's on campus. There's a Moe's on campus, and hey, really, where's the Moe's on campus? Is it in? Uh, is it in the Union? 
where is the Moe's on campus? You know, I don't really – when I go to campus, I go straight to the football stadium and out, so I don't, I don't really traipse around on campus anymore. There's a Moe's in Madison, Mississippi. Olive Branch has a Moe's. So I guess we're figuring out where all the Moe's are. The old bakery, where the bakery used to be. So I, I assume it's where the bakery used to be. So Moe's, you know what Moe's is. Anyway, it was Moe's, and it was delicious. I had two steak tacos. And um, I was very satisfied. Today I'm going to pasta today. It's pasta Wednesday, Terp, over in the cafeteria. I didn't uh, like it that much last week. It was okay. You didn't like it? I mean, it wasn't. You, you hyped it up to be like the best pasta, pasta I'm ever going to eat, and it wasn't. What is wrong with you? Nothing. It's like for $8, they give you pasta that's like three meals. It was, it was a lot. It's a lot of pasta. Lot of food, yeah. What is the best order at City Bagel? I have never been to City Bagel. I've never been to City Bagel. I know people that swear by it. I know I'm in a group text that gets together every Sunday after the game and eats at City Bagel together, but I've never gone. I've never been there. So I've never eaten at uh, at City Bagel. What's your favorite order at City Bagel? Are we just talking about Starkville restaurants now? Because I can do that. We can do it, man. Let's do it. What do you think the state Bama score will be? Honest opinion. Probably like Alabama. 28 state 10, something like that. Maybe 24 10. What do you think that spread's going to be? I think it'll be between 10 and 15 points. Um, I don't know what the LSU spread is, what, 21? 21. It'll definitely be less than that. And then state will get the home team bump. So I think between 10 and 15 points. There was a bowling alley at the Union when I was there next to the barber shop. I remember the bowling alley. Ne- it never worked. Remember that. Travis Persson was thinking 24-10. Been to Two Brothers yet? Justin Burford. No, I've never been to Two Brothers. I've heard that's very good as well. I've heard that's very good as well. I'd love to check that out. AJ Pappas, uh, Pappas, bacon, egg, and cheese on the red pepper Parmesan bagel. Well, that sounds delicious. That does sound good. Hail State from the ATL. Every time I see a state tag in the ATL, I make a fool of myself in traffic. I got behind a guy today who had a We Ring True sticker on, and um, I pulled up behind him, and I was like, I wanted to mimic ringing a cowbell to let him know I was a state fan, and I did like this, and I think he thought I wanted to fight him or something. And it didn't go well. It did not go well. Ate two brothers last weekend, pork rind nachos, Matt Tucker. That does sound good. <laughs> pork rind nachos. I've heard, does that work, pork rind nachos? What about you, Turp? Would you eat pork rind nachos? Probably not. I love pork rinds. I love nachos. I don't think they mix. I, well, do they mix? That's my question. No, I would say no. Do you like but pork apparently. rinds? Uh, yeah, I don't mind them. Do you like nachos? Yeah. Well, of course I'm, you like them. Who, who big like, nacho guy. Who doesn't like nachos? Yeah. Nachos are like the perfect food. Honk at me and I'll buy you a beer. So, yeah, I, again, but there's only 4 million people in the Atlanta metro. I, am I going to honk at everybody trying to get a beer? If I get if I honk at people on in on I seventy five and two eighty five, I might get more than a beer. You you got to really get into the Shrek shuffle. Yeah, I probably do. He thought you wanted to give him a land shark handshake. What with a hundred dollar bill in my hand? <laughs> well, yeah, thank you, thank you for that. That's my favorite. I don't know what you guys' favorite. I don't know what your favorite is as far as these land shark stuff, these land shark videos. But that's my favorite right there. Is that a real video? No, definitely not. I don't know. Maybe they. Maybe sh- a shark would do that. In God, real life. I don't know. Maybe. No. It's like the fakest. I mean, it's, it's definitely not real. Like no question. You don't know it's not real. I, I it could know. be real. That's all I'm saying. The shark is like talking. Like its mouth is like open. It's, it's no. It's, it's it's it. <laughs> It's definitely not real. Not even close. Are you too young to remember Sarge's great breakfast? Yes, I'm too young to remember uh, Sarge's. Um, what would be your best strategy to beat Alabama? I don't know. Um, build a wall between Tuscaloosa and Starkville? I, there, I don't know that there is strategy to beat Alabama. You just have to, you have to match their intensity. You have to hope they're down a little bit, and you have to, you have to get breaks. You have to. I don't know what to, I don't know the answer to that question. I really don't. You got to be balanced. You can't 
State can't not run the ball. State has to average about five yards of carry to be able to throw the ball. And if they can do that, they got a chance. Prayer would be the best strategy to beat Alabama. Abby Lauren, prayer is a great strategy for everything, Abby. Land sharks are not real. That that is, I believe that's correct as well. Score more points in Alabama. That is a revolutionary strategy from Burnell McGee down in Liberty, Mississippi. Uh, Mitt County down there. That is a, why don't people do that? Why don't people score more points in Alabama every week? That just seems easy. Luck, turnovers, and more luck. The Ole Miss method. Yes. Shark fin is a delicacy. I don't know what why that was said, but okay. Shark fin is a delicacy. I've never had shark fin. Would you eat it? Uh, I'll eat anything, yeah. I'll try it. All right. Would you eat it? Definitely. Uh, no. You won't even eat cookies and ice cream. Well, yeah, because I don't like them. I don't eat them I don't like. Land shark is the most dangerous land predator. Not from what I've seen. Not from what I've seen every uh, Saturday. Anyone else happy to see Georgia number one instead of Alabama? Troy Harper asked that. So Alabama, here's the thing. The media, or, or ESPN last night, they were talking about it, and they're right. Their resume really doesn't look great yet. But they're, if you power rank the five, the top five SEC teams, they're going to have to play the next four in the next month or two. They're going to have to play Georgia in the title game. They're going to have to play LSU this weekend. They're going to have to play State. They're going to have to play Auburn. And am I missing one? I guess, yeah, yeah, four. Yeah, next four because they're number one, right? Do you like Ma- – okay, Michael Clyburn. He said, do you like mountain oysters? Do you like them, Terp? No. Do you know what they are? Yes. Okay. With our defense, 24 points should win the game against Alabama. Sure, 24 points could win the game against Alabama. I'm not sure Mullins ever scored 24 points against Alabama. I'm almost certain he hasn't. Um, I think 20 might be our high watermark against Alabama under Mullins. And that was with Dak Prescott and Josh Robinson. What was the final score of that game? 25-20, I think. Do land sharks have? Okay. All right. We might be at a good spot to uh, to go ahead and wrap it up. Go ahead and finish this out. 114 people still here. I appreciate you guys being here. I had fun today. I had a very good time. Uh, as we do every single day, please be back at 1045 tomorrow. I'll be giving away prizes and free T-shirts. I'm just kidding. I'm not giving away anything. Um, but maybe you'll come back anyway. So until tomorrow, my name is Brandon Walker. This has been More Cowbell, the Mississippi State podcast presented by seccountry.com.